I welcome you all for the series of lecture on uh, metrology, module number uh, 10 and lecture number 2. In the previous uh, lecture number 1, we started a discussion on uh, comparators and uh, we discussed a few uh, mechanical uh, comparators. In this lecture, we will uh, continue the discussion on uh, mechanical comparators. We will discuss about uh, Sigma comparator, Johansson com microcator, and uh, we will also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of mechanical comparators. And then we will move to the discussion on uh, electrical and electronic uh, comparators, in which uh, we will be discussing about uh, electro limit gauge, visual gauging head electronic uh, comparator and their advantages and disadvantages. Then we will move on to the discussion on optical comparators. Now let us uh, discuss about uh, the Sigma comparator. Now we can see this uh, photograph shows the Sigma comparator. This is uh, the sturdy base and then we have a column uh, here on which uh, the measuring head of uh, the sig sigma comparator is uh, mounted. We can adjust the height of this measuring uh, unit by moving uh, it up and down and then uh, clamping it at the desired uh, height. So this vertical movement of the measuring unit is needed to adjust the work pieces of uh, different uh, heights. Now you can observe here a replaceable uh, table. Depending upon uh, the work pieces, we can replace uh, these uh, tables. And then we have to insert the work pieces between the surface of uh, the table and uh, the plunger. So this uh, shows the schematic uh, diagram of uh, the sigma comparator. I can see this is the uh, surface of the table and then we have uh, a job uh, which is to be inspected. The workpiece to be inspected is placed between the plunger and uh, the surface uh, plate. When the desired, when the workpiece size is equal to the desired uh, size, then uh, the pointer uh, uh, shows uh, zero initially using the slip gauges. We should adjust uh, the gap between the plunger and the surface plate equal to the desired uh, height. So in that case, the pointer will show the pointer will show the zero reading. And then what is the upper limit and what is the lower limit of the workpiece? The, so accordingly, we have to insert. Uh, uh, slip gauges equal to the upper limit of the workpiece and then we can mark uh, the upper limit of uh, the workpiece and then we should uh, insert the slip gauge equal to the lower limit of uh, the workpiece and then we can adjust the lower limit uh, of uh, the workpiece. So these uh, limiting pointers uh, we can uh, uh, adjust by operating uh, these uh, knobs. Now the construction of uh, the sigma comparator is like this. Uh, we have a plunger which is connected to a rectangular uh, block. So this uh, rectangular block is uh, supported by flexor plates, two horizontal flexor uh, plates. One plate is here, another plate is uh, here. And then we have uh, a, a knife edge which is supported on the crossed strip hinge. The details of uh, the crossed strip hinge are shown here. It consists of a fixed member and then a moving uh, member. 
with these two members are connected by flexible strips as shown uh, here. And then we have a Y arm which is one end of this is connected to the uh, crossed hinge, cross strip hinge, mo movable part of the cross uh, strip hinge. The other part is wound over a drum of uh, radius uh, R. A pointer of length capital R is mounted on uh, the drum and then there is a bronze band wound over the drum. Now, uh, having studied the construction, now let us study how uh, the uh, comparator uh, works. The plunger is uh, attached to the rectangular bar so that uh, we can observe here and uh, a knife edge is fixed to the bar which bears on sapphire block attached to the moving member of uh, cross tip hinge. Uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, Y arm or forked arm of uh, uh, length uh, Y and uh, you can see here the distance between the knife edge and this vertical cross uh, strip is uh, X. Then uh, when the workpiece is mounted or inserted between uh, the table and the plunger the, depending upon the height of uh, the workpiece, this uh, plunger along with uh, this uh, bar, rectangular bar will uh, move up and down and hence uh, the, this part, this end of the forked arm will also move up and down and then uh, the, the other end of the forked arm will also move and hence the pointer will also move uh, in this uh, fashion and hence we can take the reading using uh, the scale. The magnification uh, uh, can be calculated using this uh, expression y divided by r, y is the length of the fork arm and x is this uh, distance times r upon r where r is uh, length of the pointer and uh, small r is uh, the drum. Uh, radius. The magnification uh, possible with uh, such a comparator it varies from 300 to 5000 and uh, a least count of 0.1 micrometer is uh, possible. Now the specifications of commercially available sigma comparator are uh, as follows. Range varies from uh, uh, minus 0.07 to plus 0.07 and the scale graduation is 0 0.002 millimeter. Magnification of uh, uh, 1000 and up to 5000 is uh, possible. And then we have uh, interchangeable work table. Depending upon the work piece, these uh, tables can be uh, changed. And the contact uh, tips, the plunger end which uh, makes contact with the workpiece, they are uh, replaceable. Uh, we can have a flat end uh, contact tip or a rounded end contact tip like this. That depends upon the uh, type of uh, workpiece to be inspected. The workpiece height that is uh, that can be inserted between the plunger and the table surface uh, varies from 150 millimeter to uh, up to 600 millimeter by adjusting the height of uh, this measuring uh, unit. And then we, we, have, we can also have uh, the tolerance uh, indicators which will indicate the upper and lower limit of the workpiece. Now we will move on to the discussion on uh, Johansson uh, microcator. The construction of uh, the Johansson microcator is uh, shown here. We have uh, the two S-shaped uh, uh, parts. These two parts are uh, assembled by using this uh, flexible uh, slit uh, washer. 
Now in the middle we have uh, the plunger which uh, moves up and down depending upon the workpiece uh, height and then there is a bell crank uh, lever. This bell crank uh, lever, uh, one end of the bell crank lever is connected to this uh, S shaped body and the other end is connected to the top end of uh, the plunger and then there is a metallic uh, twisted uh, strip. So here we have a cantilever uh, strip between the cantilever strip and the bell crank lever we have this uh, uh, twisted uh, strip and uh, then we at the center we have a light uh, pointer. Now let us see how uh, the uh, this comparator uh, works. The any when, when we insert the workpiece between the table surface and uh, the plunger, uh, the plunger moves uh, up and uh, down depending upon uh, the height of the workpiece. Any longitudinal movement in either direction, upward direction or lower direction will cause the central portion of the strip to rotate. See when the plunger moves up and down, this bell crank uh, lever uh, will uh, move in this uh, fashion. So because of uh, this, the uh, length of uh, this uh, twisted uh, strip uh, changes and hence this uh, pointer, uh, the strip will rotate along with uh, the pointer. Now you can see one end of the strip is fixed to an adjustable uh, uh, cantilever and the other end is fixed to this uh, bell crank uh, lever. The bell crank lever in turn is uh, connected to the plunger at this uh, portion. So which uh, moves up and uh, down when we insert uh, the work piece. Now the bell crank lever causes the twisted strip to change length when there is a movement in the plunger. This uh, change in length will result in a proportional amount of twist of the metallic uh, strip. The magnification uh, can be varied by changing uh, the length of uh, this uh, bell crank uh, lever. Now what are the advantages of uh, mechanical uh, comparators? Uh, these are usually inexpensive when uh, compared to other uh, devices, other comp types of comparators. These do not require any external uh, power supply such as uh, electrical supply or compressed air supply. Usually the mechanical comparators have a linear uh, scale uh, which is uh, easily uh, readable. Uh, these uh, mechanical comparators are very robust and they are very compact and hence they are easy to handle. For ordinary workshop uh, conditions these are suitable and are uh, portable. Now what are the disadvantages of mechanical comparators? They have uh, many moving uh, parts than uh, the other types. Due to this, the friction is more and ultimately the accuracy is uh, less. So this uh, diagram, this uh, photograph shows the various uh, parts, disassembled parts of uh, a dial uh, indicator. Any slackness in moving parts reduces the accuracy considerably. The mechanism has more uh, inertia and this may cause the instruments to be sensitive to vibration. The range of the instrument is uh, very much uh, limited as the pointer moves over uh, a fixed uh, scale. Now let us start the discussion on uh, electrical uh, comparator, a particular uh, comparator named electro limit uh, gauge. So in this uh, we will study the construction of uh, the measuring unit of electro limit gauge and uh, working principle of uh, electro limit uh, gauge. Now you can see here the schematic uh, diagram of uh, the measuring head of electro limit uh, gauge. The construction is uh, uh, shown here. Uh, this is uh, 
the surface plate or table on which we have to place uh, the workpiece, we have to insert the workpiece between the plunger and uh, the table uh, surface. Now the plunger depending upon uh, the height of uh, the workpiece, the plunger will uh, move up and uh, down. If the height of the workpiece is greater than the desired height, the plunger will move up. If the height of the workpiece is lower than the desired uh, height, then the plunger will move down. And then we have a, an armature which is uh, supported by metal, uh, metal strip uh, springs here. So the other end is free to move uh, up and down. When the plunger moves up and down, this uh, armature will also move uh, up and down like this. It will tilt like uh, this, this being the hinged point. Now when the workpiece is removed, plunger will uh, move back because of this uh, spring uh, force. Now you can see here we have uh, two electromagnetic uh, coils A and B housed in this uh, uh, enclosure. Now these uh, two coils A and B they form two arms of uh, AC bridge unit. When the plunger moves up and down uh, this uh, uh, the armature will also move the movement of the armature between the coils so the armature will move uh, in this fashion so uh, th this part of the armature will uh, move up and down in the gap between uh, these two coils because of the movement of the armature the coils uh, sets up out of uh, balance uh, which is indicated by the display unit. So this uh, display unit will directly show the amount of movement of uh, the plunger which will indicate the deviation in size from the desired uh, size. Now this uh, view shows uh, a complete arrangement of uh, an electrical uh, comparator. We have uh, the table uh, uh, surface plate surface and then this is the work table on which we have to ins we have place the components or work pieces to be inspected and this is the plunger of uh, the electro limit uh, gauge. So this uh, housing contains uh, the uh, two coils, armature, etc. etc. So this is the measuring uh, unit. The height of this uh, measuring unit can be adjusted by operating this uh, wheel uh, to accommodate the work pieces of uh, different uh, size. Now uh, the plunger uh, movement sets uh, the uh, sets up an out of uh, balance which is uh, supplied to the uh, the recording uh, head. So when there is out of uh, balance because of the movement of the armature, now this uh, pointer will move over the scale and uh, that uh, movement of the pointer indicates the deviation of uh, the size from the desired uh, uh, size. Now this is uh, the schematic diagram of uh, visual uh, gauging uh, head. Now this is the uh, work uh, table on which uh, we have to place the components. This is the plunger of uh, this visual uh, gauging head which is connected to rod C. So in between the plunger and uh, the rod C we have uh, the magnification uh, device which can be a mechanical lever uh, arrangement. Now we have uh, two electrical contacts A and B. So in between uh, there is a gap between A and B there is a gap in which uh, the rod C will uh, swing. Now the electrical contacts uh, position can be adjusted by operating the micrometers. So depending upon uh, the upper limit and lower limit, the position of these electrical contacts uh, is uh, adjusted by operating the micrometers. 
Now when the uh, rod C is in central position, that means the, it is not in contact with either A or B, then that indicates that uh, the workpiece size is between upper limit and lower limit and uh, the green light will glow, which indicates that workpiece can be accepted. Now, uh, if the workpiece size is greater than the desired size or if it crosses the upper limit, then rod C moves to the right and makes contact with uh, B. When uh, the workpiece height is greater than the upper limit, the plunger will move up and then the uh, rod C will swing and it makes contact with this uh, contact B and then red light will glow indicating that the workpiece is above the upper limit and it should be rejected. Now the workpiece is undersized that means it is uh, lower than the lower uh, limit then the rod C moves to left and makes contact with uh, the contact uh, A and then the yellow light will glow indicating that the workpiece size is uh, lo lower than the lower limit and it should be rejected. So we can uh, see that uh, in this type of uh, uh, comparator, the actual size of the workpiece is not indicated. It will only indicate whether the workpiece is acceptable or uh, uh, to be rejected. Now uh, this uh, shows multi-gauging uh, device. In the previous uh, uh, case, uh, we have one set of uh, contacts. That means at any given particular uh, time, uh, at any given point of time, we can uh, check only one uh, dimension. Whereas in multi-gauging uh, devices, multiple sizes can be checked at a time. For example, we have uh, a work. Uh, piece wherein we have four dimensions to be inspected. This is the first dimension, second dimension, third dimension and fourth dimension. Four dimensions are to be checked. In such cases, we can have a multi-gauging uh, device. Uh, since four dimensions are to be checked, we can have uh, four uh, gauging uh, units. So the work piece uh, to be inspected is uh, 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 placed on the table and uh, uh, the work uh, parts will come in contact with these uh, gauging uh, units. So depending upon uh, the actual size of uh, the uh, different dimension of the work piece, the yellow light, green light or red light glow depending upon the size and uh, they will indicate uh, whether the work piece uh, can be accepted or not. Now we will move to the discussion on electronic uh, comparator. So this uh, diagram shows the general arrangement of an electronic uh, comparator. So this is uh, the contact probe or uh, stylus which comes in contact with uh, the workpiece. The workpiece is to be inserted between the contact probe and uh, the table. So depending upon uh, the height of the workpiece, uh, this uh, contact probe will uh, swing. Now uh, the electronic circuitry of uh, this comparator is like this. We have, an, uh, we have oscillator and then we have a regulated uh, a DC supply and there is provision for adjusting zero. Uh, the range also can be adjusted, different ranges can be selected and then magnification can be adjusted. Now these electronic uh, comparators they work on principle of frequency modulation. When the workpiece is placed on the table, the oscillator frequency alters. Uh, that is because of uh, change in the dimension of uh, workpiece from the preset uh, value. For the desired uh, size of the workpiece, there is a particular uh, frequency. When the size of the workpiece differs from the desired uh, size, then uh, the frequency gets altered uh, then which is indicated by this uh, display unit in terms of uh, linear uh, dimension. So thereby we can uh, uh, 
uh, inspect the work piece and then we can decide whether it should be acceptable or uh, uh, rejectable. Now let us study how we can use uh, an electrical comparator. Um, uh, we can see the slipcage box which is used as uh, a reference to set uh, the comparator for the basic size. Now uh, we are watching uh, the electrical comparator LVDT fixed to the stand. We can see the indicator which uh, indicates the deviation of the work piece from the basic size. We can see two uh, knobs are there to set the limits, upper limit and uh, lower limit. We can uh, uh, connect two comparators at a time A and B and this is for adjusting uh, the sensitivity of the comparator. Now it is set to 100 units, 100 microns. So lower, the highest uh, sensitivity is uh, 0 to 3 microns. Now uh, you can see the knob is set to 100 uh, microns. So the range is from 3 microns to 1000 uh, microns. Now we can see the back view of uh, the indicator. So we can observe the power uh, connection. This is the power connection, power cable. And we can connect a uh, 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 comparator to A and B at a time. We can connect to two comparators. Now, uh, the power uh, connection to the indicator. Now, you can see this is the LVDT, the comparator, electrical comparator, fixed to the stand, rigid stand. You can see the, it is fixed to the bracket and the height of the comparator can be adjusted by moving it up and down and then uh, we can clamp it using the knob. So this is the clamp to clamp the electrical comparator. Now uh, we can see the object to be inspected. The uh, basic size is, uh, the size of the component is measured using uh, the vernier caliper. So basic size is 19 millimeter. Now uh, the basic size of the workpiece is 19 millimeter, so I have to take uh, two. I have to build a pile of slip gauge of height 19 millimeter. So I am taking uh, two slip gauges. First one is 9 millimeter, and second one is 10 millimeter thickness uh, slip gauge. I am bringing uh, the two slip gauges after cleaning them. Now we can see the slip gauge pile of 19 millimeter thick. So this is uh, the basic size of the component. So I am inserting the slip gauge pile between the table surface and uh, the plunger of uh, the electrical comparator. And then indicator is uh, set to read 0 when the size is uh, 19 millimeter. Now you can see the pointer is uh, reading uh, uh, 0. There is a small parallax error. Now the reading is 0.
Now uh, I'm remo removing uh, the slip cache file and then I'm inserting the word piece to be inspected. Depending upon the actual size of uh, the work piece, the pointer will move to the positive side or negative side. If the size is greater than 19 mm, pointer will move to the positive side. Now it is reading uh, 4. So we have selected the range uh, sensitivity of 100. So we have to read the top scale. Now let us uh, discuss on uh, advantages of uh, electrical and electronic uh, comparators. Now in these uh, type of uh, comparators, the measuring unit uh, can be at a remote uh, place and uh, display unit can be in a control uh, room. So in the control room, uh, we will come to know uh, whether uh, the workpiece uh, can be accepted or uh, uh, rejected or how many workpieces are uh, rejected, how many workpieces are accepted in a uh, particular shift can be uh, that, uh, that details can be obtained in the display unit placed in the control uh, room. Now there are uh, very less number of moving parts in electrical and electronic uh, comparators. Hence the frictional losses are very very less. So very high magnifications are possible as I as uh, 10,000 uh, times. The measuring unit can be very small, uh, very compact and hence it, it is uh, easily portable. Now what are the disadvantages of electrical and electronic comparators? These uh, types of uh, comparators, they require external uh, power uh, supply, that is electrical power supply uh, is uh, needed for the operation of these comparators. If there is any fluctuation in the electrical uh, power supply, uh, it will definitely affect uh, the results obtained from the comparators. And since uh, in some cases there are heating the coils, uh, the magnetic coils are there, because of heating of these coils, the measuring unit may cause uh, zero drift, which alters uh, the calibration of the comparator. So at uh, regular uh, intervals, we have to recalibrate the comparator to ensure that the comparators are working with uh, the correct uh, calibration. If uh, the scale is uh, fixed with a moving uh, pointer, then the working range is uh, uh, very small with high magnification of the comparator. Generally, these uh, electrical and electronic comparators are more expensive when compared to mechanical comparators. Now in these uh, type of uh, comparators, the measuring unit uh, can be at a remote uh, place and uh, display unit can be in a control uh, room. So in the control room, uh, we will come to know whether uh, the workpiece uh, can be accepted or uh, uh, rejected or how many workpieces are uh, rejected, how many workpieces are accepted in a uh, particular shift can be uh, that, uh, that details can be obtained in the display unit placed in the control uh, room. Now there are uh, very less number of moving parts in electrical and electronic uh, comparators. Hence the frictional losses are very very less. So very high magnifications are possible as I as uh, ten thousand uh, times. The measuring unit can be very small, uh, very compact and hence it, it is uh, easily portable. Now what are the disadvantages of electrical and electronic comparators? These uh, types of uh, comparators, they require external uh, power uh, supply, that is electrical power supply uh, is uh, needed for the operation of these comparators. If there is any fluctuation in the electrical uh, power supply, uh, it will definitely affect uh, the results obtained from the comparators. And since uh, in some cases there are heating the coils, uh, the magnetic coils are there, because of heating of these coils, the measuring unit may cause uh, zero drift, 
which alters uh, the calibration of the comparator. So at uh, regular uh, intervals, we have to recalibrate the comparator to ensure that the comparators are working with uh, correct uh, calibration. If uh, the scale is uh, fixed with a moving uh, pointer, then the working range is uh, uh, very small with high magnification of the comparator. Generally, these uh, electrical and electronic comparators are more expensive when compared to mechanical comparators. Now let us uh, move on to the discussion on optical uh, comparator. Now uh, let us study the working principle of optical uh, comparator. Uh, we can uh, see here, uh, we have a mirror which is pivoted at this point and at a distance of D we have a plunger. So this plunger moves uh, up and down when we insert the workpiece between the uh, plunger and uh, the table. So when the plunger uh, moves uh, up and down, the mirror gets uh, tilted. Now uh, when there is no movement, when the mirror is horizontal, uh, we have a, a light uh, source here. This is the uh, light source and this is the reflected uh, light source. And then we have a screen with a, a scale. Now the angle, this uh, angle is equal to the, the angle that is available here. This is the normal, uh, normal to the mirror uh, surface. This is the light ray and this is the reflected uh, light ray. So this angle is equal to this angle. Now when the plunger moves uh, up, when the plunger moves up by a distance h, then the mirror gets tilted by an angle alpha. Now we can observe that the reflected light, the reflected light tilts by an angle 2 alpha. If the mirror tilts by alpha, the reflected light tilts by 2 alpha and this is how we get uh, magnification in uh, optical uh, comparators. Now this uh, picture shows uh, the general arrangement of uh, optical uh, comparator. We have uh, the table surface and this is the workpiece. So depending upon uh, the heights of workpieces, the uh, we have uh, the input displacement x. So this is the deviation from the desired uh, size. We have a, a lever and then there is a pivot here. And the, the one end of the lever is in contact with uh, the workpiece surface and the other end is in contact with the mirror. So when the pivot, uh, when the pi pointer, the one end of the uh, lever moves by distance of x, the other end moves by a distance uh, y because of this uh, mechanical uh, amplification. Now when uh, the this end of uh, the lever moves by y, the uh, pivot, again uh, we have a mirror here and then a pivot here. So because of the movement of the, this moment y, the mirror tilts by 2 theta and uh, the reflected light moves by 2 theta. So if uh, the moment at this point is a small x, the moment of the pointer over the scale is capital X. So the, uh, hence we get uh, uh, the, uh, this, this, this moment is uh, magnified here. So there are, we have a mechanical amplification as well as optical amplification. Now the main advantage of optical uh, comparator is that it is capable of giving a higher degree of uh, magnification uh, due to the uh, reduction in uh, moving members, less number of uh, moving members are there and uh, higher uh, uh, 
degree of magnification is possible because uh, we use two types of uh, magnifications one by mechanical amplification and further it is magnified by optical uh, uh, means so far we discussed about uh, the different kinds of comparators wherein the there is a plunger in the comparator which comes in contact with uh, the workpiece uh, surface and then uh, the plunger uh, uh, moves depending upon uh, the size of uh, the workpiece and uh, the movement of the plunger is sensed and then it is amplified and the amplified value is uh, compared with uh, the size of uh, with the desired size of the workpiece now let us uh, study about uh, the another uh, method of comparison wherein we use uh, chart gauges the chart gauges uh, contain uh, lines which uh, denote the tolerance limits of the parts now you can see here we have a, a diagram here this is uh, the screen of uh, the optical uh, projector optical comparator and then a chart gauge is uh, fixed or mounted on the screen of uh, optical comparator these uh, chart gauges they contain uh, uh, lines you can see here this is uh, a line corresponding to the upper upper limit of uh, the workpiece and then we have another uh, line inside corresponding to the lower limit of the workpiece low limit of the workpiece and this is the shadow or image of uh, the workpiece so image is uh, made to fall on the chart gauge the shadow of the part is made to fall on the chart gauge and uh, if the shadow is uh, within the tolerance uh, zones that means uh, you can see here the shadow the edges of the shadow are between upper limit and uh, a lower uh, limit now if this is the case the workpiece is acceptable now you can see here how uh, the comparison is uh, made so this uh, is uh, the screen of uh, optical uh, uh, profile projector uh, wherein uh, on the screen a chart gauge is uh, mounted you can see here we have uh, uh, different lines corresponding to different radius uh, values and then we have a circular uh, scale using which we can uh, measure the angle so this is the workpiece uh, image and this is the chart gauge mounted on the screen so these uh, apart from the comparison these chart gauges are used uh, to check fillets chamfers threads etc for example so we have a workpiece uh, like this and then uh, uh, using the radius uh, chart gauge we can uh, measure the radius of uh, this fillet that means the shadow of this work part is made to fall on the chart gauge say the, this is the shadow of this particular uh, part and uh, we can uh, see to which radius line this uh, shadow is coinciding and that particular uh, uh, the radius will that particular line will indicate what is the radius of the fillet similarly we can measure the chamfers and then we can also uh, check uh, the threads screw threads using uh, these uh, chart gauges
Now, how do we design the chart uh, gauges? The following uh, considerations are very, very important in designing uh, the chart gauges. The chart gauge uh, should be made of a dimensionally stable uh, material. Uh, a rigid uh, material is uh, preferred, so normally plastic sheets, uh, clear uh, transparent uh, plastic sheets uh, are used or uh, the chart gauges are made on uh, the soda lime glass plates. The humidity and temperature coefficients of the chart gauge material must be considered. The lines on the chart gauge uh, must be uniform in width uh, with uh, sharp uh, edges. The lines must uh, withstand the normal usage and cleaning uh, operation. The chart gauges should be calibrated at regular uh, intervals. Uh, determined uh, by the usage. The chart gauge master image should be produced with a precision plotter to 0 0.025 mm or uh, better accuracy. The calibration fiduciary marks should be included for dimensional uh, control. They should be stored. The chart gauges uh, should be stored flat and they should never be rolled. Uh, and they should be stored in uh, a normal gauge room environment uh, wherein the proper temperature and humidity is controlled. Now there are uh, custom uh, chart uh, gauges depending upon uh, the uh, application or the customer usage. These uh, custom built chart gauges are made by using uh, a CAD uh, file or uh, a marked up uh, print along with the chart uh, size and uh, what is the magnification needed is also uh, should be known uh, to prepare uh, the custom uh, chart gauges. Now we can see here this is a custom uh, chart gauge with uh, the upper limit and lower limit of the work piece. Commercially standard uh, chart gauges are available in the market and uh, they are uh, reproduced under controlled uh, conditions from uh, Precision Master on a dimensionally stable plastic sheet or uh, soda lime uh, glass. Standard chart gauges are available in various uh, line patterns at various magnifications like uh, 10x, 20x, 50x. So different uh, magnifications, chart gauge with different magnifications uh, are available in uh, English as well as metric uh, units. I can see some of the standard uh, chart gauges. So this is a center line uh, chart gauge, radius uh, chart gauge for example. So we have a work piece, round uh, work piece. So the round work piece is uh, placed on the table of uh, the optical uh, comparator, profile projector and shadow is obtained on the screen uh, which contains uh, the radius uh, chart gauge. The image is compared with uh, the lines printed on the chart gauge. So with which line, with which uh, circular uh, pattern it is coinciding that gives uh, the radius value or the diameter value. Uh, similarly, thread, uh, screw thread uh, chart gauges are available, protractors are available using which we can uh, measure the angles. So this uh, picture shows a combination uh, chart uh, gauge. You can see here one side we have uh, the which gives radius uh, values and other side we have angle. Angle can be uh, measured, angle of uh, the work pieces can be measured. So this is a radius angle chart uh, gauge. Now uh, we can see a component which is having uh, an angle. So it is placed on uh, the table of profile projector. We wish to measure the angle between these two edges.
Now we have selected uh, an objective of uh, 10x. I am using a chart gauge of 10x. It is mounted on the screen of a profile projector. So this uh, angle chart gauge is used to check the angle on the work piece. Now you can see one edge, the shadow of one edge of the work piece is coinciding with the zero line and uh, the other edge of the shadow is coinciding with the 45 degree line. So the wedge angle on the work piece is 45 degrees. Like this we can use uh, the chart gauges for measurement of uh, angles. So this is uh, the complete view of a chart gauge. Radius can be measured as also angles can be measured using uh, this particular uh, chart gauge. Now what are the advantages of uh, the optical uh, comparators uh, which uses uh, chart uh, gauges. So these uh, optical uh, comparators have uh, a small uh, number of uh, moving uh, parts. Now let us study what are the advantages of optical uh, comparators. So these uh, optical comparators have a small number of uh, moving parts and hence uh, less uh, friction and higher accuracy is possible. In the optical uh, comparators, the scale can be moved past uh, a datum line and thus have a higher uh, range and no parallax errors. It has uh, a very high magnification and optical lever is uh, weight less. So, inertia effects are uh, very, very less. Now, there are some disadvantages of optical uh, comparators. As the instrument has uh, a high magnification, heat from the lamp and transformer, etc., may cause uh, the setting to drift. An electrical supply is necessary for the operation of uh, optical uh, comparators to light up the lamp. The apparatus is usually large and very expensive when compared to other types. When the scale is projected on a screen, then it is essential to use the instrument at a dark room in order to take the readings easily. If there is too much of light in the room where the optical comparators are placed, then the reading uh, taking readings uh, becomes a bit difficult. The instruments in which the scale is viewed through the eyepiece of a microscope. Uh, such uh, instruments are not convenient for continuous uh, use since uh, the operator is subjected to eye fatigue. Let us uh, conclude this uh, lecture 2. In this uh, lecture, we discussed about uh, the different uh, kinds of uh, mechanical comparators such as uh, Sigma comparator, Johansson uh, microcator. We discussed the construction and uh, working of uh, these uh, Sigma and Johansson microcator. Also we discussed about uh, the various advantages and disadvantages of mechanical comparators. Then we also discussed about uh, the electrical and electronic uh, comparators. In this uh, section, we discussed about electro limit uh, gauge, visual gauging head, electronic uh, comparator, and uh, various advantages and disadvantages. Also, we discussed about uh, the optical comparators. So, in this section, we discussed uh, the working principles of uh, optical comparators. And we also discussed about uh, the use of uh, chart uh, gauges, the different types of uh, chart gauges and how to use them. And also we discussed about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, 
optical comparators. In the next uh, lecture, we continue the discussion on uh, the comparators. Thank you.